Hey guys, in this tutorial we create a rock climbing themed cake. First I'm putting a little ganache onto a drum to glue the cake down. This is a 6 inch round in chocolate. Place it slightly off centre towards the back. Add your filling of choice, this is my black cherry cake. Keep filling and layering. My regular tiers are 4 cakes high. This is extra tall for the climbing wall, so I'm using 7 cake layers. Then give the whole thing a good squish. The cake will eventually set under its own weight, so it's good to get any extra filling out now by pressing down. Obviously, soft cakes this tall are going to be a tad wobbly, so insert a straw down to hold the layers. Cut the straw down slightly smaller than your cake to allow for further settling. Now take a knife and start to hack off chunks of cake. It's a climbing wall, so it will have lumps and bumps. Just make sure it looks uneven. To stop the cake from wobbling, we are adding our first layer of ganache, which also seals the sponge in. Just cover the whole thing, staying mindful that you want to follow the contours of the crevices, rather than fill them in like polyfiller. Once that's set, you can add the second layer. As you can see, the actual cake itself is no longer wobbly, it's just my slightly dodgy turntable. Try not to smooth it too much, we are aiming for a rock texture, not a baby's bum. Once set, give it a spritz of water so it's ready for sugar paste. Roll up your paste around your rolling pin, here I'm using Renshaw's Premium Covering Paste which takes texture quite well. Unwrap the paste, cut down the overlap and just adhere it all the way around. Fold in the top the best you can and snip off any extra bulk. Smooth down the joins and give it a quick once over with a smudger or a smoother. My smoother was in the firing line of my airbrush on another cake I was working on, hence the colouring. Trim the sugar paste from the board and use a scraper to push and neaten the base underneath. It's that fabulous texture mat again, tin foil. Scrunch it up and push it in firmly all around the surface. Add in some cracks with the Dresden tool. Ignore that colouring at the back. I started painting but figured it would just be quicker with an airbrush. Now I'm following the colouring from a specific wall climbing venue that the birthday boy visits. They have a reddish brown climbing rock in the middle, however feel free to use greys and blacks for yours instead. I'm firstly going over the whole thing in red as the base. Then take some water yes water and spray it all over. This is going to keep the colour deep in that texture you made and loosen the surface colour so it can be removed. Just dab it with a paper towel. Now the red is in the texture and we can overlay the white bits in brown airbrush. Here you can see much more texture than when it was just all sprayed red. Finally goes on the black. Darken any areas that will have shadow or dirt, such as the very base, the cracks and crevices where it concaves in. Again, feel free to skip this, but the climbing wall I was copying had white areas along some of its edges. This is snowdrift powder, watered down and dabbed on with a stiff paintbrush. Cover the board in black around the cake using the toilet seat method. If you haven't tried it yet, where have you been? Head to the description box to find the link to the full tutorial on it. Now, I'm not a climber, so I don't know their official name, but the wall grips are simply squash balls of paste in varying sizes and shapes. If your airbrush colour is still wet, they should stick straight on. Add them all around the cake. Using your favourite black paint, add it to a plate and grab yourself a teeny tiny ball tool. Dip the tool in the paint and stab the wall grip. Voila! There's the screw holding it on. It's oddly satisfying. 
Then continue to add lots of grips in different colours. If you look at some of the climbing venues, you'll see they have a huge amount of various grips. For quick numbers, if you don't have the drying time, take some 5mm foam core and draw your number out on it. For straight lines, feel free to use a ruler, but maybe get a metal one as these scalpels are super sharp and will cut through the plastic. A few runs through the foam should be enough. Dampen the foam with water. Mine just had excess paint on the brush. Lay over your sugar paste of choice and trim them down to match your numbers. Next insert kebab sticks or cocktail sticks up inside the foam until it feels secure and trim them to size. To frame them, roll out some black paste into a long sausage. Water isn't strong enough here on the edges, so use piping gel. Lay the sausage all the way around the number, trimming to size and pushing in any tight corners with the Dresden tool. Flip it over onto some foam and give it a press. Once they are finished, insert them into the cake. Quick, easy, large numbers ready to go with no drying time and no breakage. For the pants, roll out a sausage of paste and bend it into a loop. Tap the tops of the loop to square it off a bit and trim down the legs. As these are cuffed joggers, I'm just pinching the bottoms inwards a bit. Then add on a flattened disc to the base for the cuff. Press in at the back of the knees. Bend one knee and pinch it so it looks like he has his leg bent. Stick the pants to the cake with one leg straight down and the other bent outwards. Ta-da, they are now blue. Always check your order form as you go along. You know, just on the off chance they requested a grey jumper and not grey pants. Now take your grey and roll it into a cylinder type shape. Pinch around the bottom to level it out. Stick this on top of the pants, bending the body slightly. Take a Dresden tool and mark in crease lines on the clothing. An arm is a grey sausage with one end cut at an angle. Place this on the body and lean it towards a grip. Same with the other arm. Hands start as a little oval of flesh and trim in at an angle for a thumb and cut it straight so you've removed a little triangle shape. Tap the edges so they are rounded out and give it a very slight point. Trim in three lines to make four fingers. It's fiddly, but separate the fingers if you can and gently roll them between two of your fingers to round them out and tap down any end points. Push all the fingers back together and do the thumb. A quick cartoony hand. Add this to the ends of the sleeves, wrapping the fingers around the grips just like you would hold them. For the harness, roll strings of black paste and wrap them around the tops of both legs and the waist. The shoes are fat sausages pinched out so they're flattened at the bottom. Stick these to the bottom of the pants and add flattened ovals of black to the bases of them. I'm working on a specific set of footwear, so feel free to skip this step and maybe just paint some laces on instead.
The head is a small egg shape of flesh paste pressed down across the centre. With the larger end of the Dresden tool, push in for eye sockets and widen them out. A tiny oval creates a nose. Just merge the top to the face with the Dresden tool. With the sharp end, etch in a little smile. The tool can leave it quite open, so push the lips back together. Add a crease at the corner of his mouth. Now fill in those eye sockets with white paste, flattening it out. Roll small balls of black paste for pupils and smaller white ones for catch lights. With dark brown gel colour mixed with water, paint on eyebrows and line the tops of the eyes. Please excuse the hands, they are pretty much permanently stained. Insert a cocktail stick as support and lower on the head. Whilst that has time to firm up a little, place the name on the board. I've cut this out with tappets which I'll leave linked below. To see a foolproof method on how to release letters every time, there's a full tutorial here on my channel in the basics playlist. Now for the hat. Dampen the head and cut a circle of paste from blue. Place it behind the head and wrap it around, gathering any extra at the top. Snip this off and tap it down. Even out the base of the cap with a scalpel and cut out that semicircle from the front. Join the gap with a small sausage of paste. For hair sticking out, roll small tapered sausages and layer them up inside the gap. Also add in sideburns and a sausage of paste underneath at the back, textured with the sharp end. Ears are just small discs of flesh held into position and poked at with the sharp end to keep them on. The brim of the hat is a flattened pointed sausage which is tucked around the back of the head and the point is blended into the cap. Paint the hair if you wish with gel colours. Finally, no climbing cake will be complete without rope. Roll out a long thin string of brown paste and loop it. Twist the string together, moving one hand up and one hand down to spiral it. Trim it down to size and add them to the board coiled up and one draped across the numbers stuck down with water. even one hanging down the front of the cake. And we're done, a great cake for any climbing fan. You can even make it in grey and add moss for any outdoor climbers. Hope you enjoyed this one, if you did leave me a comment below, I try to read and reply to most of you when I can. Thanks guys, see you next week!